Hello everybody. Today we are going to talk about sound. I'm sure you all are very familiar with sound because I don't think I have any deaf students in the class. Of course that might explain some of the grades I receive from you, but I still don't think it's appropriate. So sound, chapter 15. How do I get rid of this crap here on the bottom? There we go. Sound is energy transferred from particle to particle through matter which sounds a lot like a wave because sound, you guessed it, is a wave. So sound is how we hear, and this is how we hear. We have an outer ear. The outer ear collects the sound. Next, we have the middle ear. The middle ear amplifies sound. That means it makes it louder. And then you have the inner ear. The inner ear converts the sound to impulses which hit nerves and little hairs in your ear which we transform into information through our brains. Yes, the human body is an amazing thing. So here's a picture of an ear. It looks kind of gross. You have your outer ear. That's, you know, the part we see. And it's like a funnel. And it funnels all the sound waves through the ear canal. And if you don't use a Q-tip or some other means to get all the wax out of there, yeah, it'll eventually get filled up. Then it hits a drum. I like drums. And this eardrum causes vibrations to travel through the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. Apparently whoever named these was also a blacksmith. And the hammer, anvil, stirrup, they make up the middle ear, which amplifies the waves. And then it goes into the inner ear, which converts waves to nerve pulses. It kind of looks like a squid, the uh, cochlea, you know, like a conch shell or something. And that transmit or transforms the sound waves into nerves so we can hear stuff. So properties of sound. Sound has intensity and sound has loudness. When we're talking about intensity, the intensity depends on the energy in the sound wave. The more energy, the more intensity. The less energy, the less intensity. It's a direct proportional relationship for all you math nerds out there. And loudness is human perception of intensity. Loudness is how we perceive this intensity. So something that's more intense, we generally hear is a louder sound. Something less intense is a more softer sound. And loudness is measured on the decibel scale. I'm sure you've all heard the word decibel before when it comes to like music or, you know, you know sounds, since that we're that's what we're talking about. And here's a little chart of loudness, common things, and their decibel equivalents. Down here at the far end, we have a whisper, which is only like 15 decibels. Some rustling of leaves, a purring kitty cat. The average household, if you have lots of brothers and sisters, like I do, is probably up more up around here than noisy restaurant. Vacuum cleaner is pretty loud. For some reason, we don't have anything for 100. You have a power mower, which is about 110 decibels. Chainsaw, a little bit louder still. And then at 120, you hit what's called the pain threshold. And that's where sound can actually cause physical discomfort and even like hurt your sensitive uh, bits in your ears. And way up here, we have a jet plane taking off. You see people working out on runways at airports. They always got hearing protection on. So threshold of hearing, the lowest sound we can hear is zero decibels. Well, we can't really hear it. That's just as low as it goes. And the threshold of pain is 120 decibels. So frequency and pitch. High frequency means more vibrations hitting the ear. Frequency is measured in waves per second. So a higher frequency, more waves per second hitting your ear. And pitch is how high or how low a sound seems to be. I tend to talk monotone, especially when I'm delivering lectures. So my pitch does not vary. But sometimes it can go up and sometimes it can go down. And that's me changing pitch. I should probably work on that more. So I sound less like Ben Stein from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Bueller. Bueller. Healthy human ears can hear from 20 hertz to about 20,000 hertz. That's a lot of hertz. But we're most sensitive, we can distinguish more sounds in the 440 to 7,000 hertz range. We get outside this range, it's harder to distinguish sounds with actually concentrate on what we're hearing. 
ultrasonic sound has a frequency greater than 20,000 hertz. Ultrasonic means over. So anything over 20,000 hertz is ultrasonic. We can't hear that stuff, but dogs can, because they can hear up to 35,000 hertz. A dog whistle actually makes a really high frequency sound that your dogs can hear and that we can't hear. And if you can hear it, that means maybe you're part dog. Bats can hear even higher, 100,000 hertz. They actually use sound to navigate. They use sonar. They send out a really high frequency sound. It bounces off little tiny mosquitoes in the air, bounces back into their big ears, and that's how they can actually see without using their eyes. They actually see with sound. Dolphins do the same thing, whales, anything that uses sonar. And it's also used in medical equipment. I'm sure you've all watched television shows that have doctors and pregnant ladies. And the doctor runs a little machine over the pregnant lady's stomach and you can see the little baby inside. You also have infrasonic sound, which has frequency below 20,000 hertz, or sorry, below 20 hertz. They are felt rather than heard. You can't hear them, but you can feel them. Uh, some animals can pick it up, those with big ears, like elephants, they can actually uh, hear sounds below the 20 hertz. Some examples of this, earthquakes. Earthquakes actually produce a sound, but it's lower than 20 hertz, but we can definitely feel an earthquake. And uh, heavy machinery, like dump trucks, stuff like that, like we could feel the rumbling rather than hear it. Now we're going to talk about the speed of sound. The speed of sound changes varying with material and temperature. At zero degrees Celsius, which is pretty much the temperature outside right now, sound travels at 331 meters per second. But if the temperature goes up by one degree Celsius, the sound speed actually goes up by 0.6 meters per second until we hit the uh, common speed of sound that we've used before. I know that one of the problems on the test we used 343 meters per second. 343 meters per second is the sound, or sorry, the speed of sound in air at 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, subsonic, stuff moving slower than sound. Sub, below, sonic, sound, below sound. There's also supersonic, faster than sound. Uh, if you've ever seen like any airplane movies like Top Gun, you talk about Mach 1, Mach 2. Mach 1 is actually the speed of sound, and a lot of jet planes can actually go faster than the speed of sound. And when they do, they create a sonic boom, which is actually a pressure cone. And now we're going to have an English lady explain to us what a sonic boom is. We're all used to the idea that light travels faster than sound. Think about thunderstorms. You always see the lightning before you hear the thunder, despite the fact that they both occur at the same time. Sound travels at approximately 330 meters per second, which is pretty fast. However, man has been able to beat this speed and break the sound barrier with supersonic travel. The incredible thing about breaking the sound barrier is that it not only produces an audible effect, but also a visible one. Take a look at this picture. You can actually see the effect on the air as the plane blasts through the sound barrier isn't that amazing? The reason why this occurs is because as the plane travels through the air, it pushes the air out of the way, which creates pressure waves that travel at the speed of sound. This is similar to the waves created by the bow and stern of a boat as it moves through the water. As the plane approaches the sound barrier, the air cannot get out of the way quick enough and it is squashed together into one big shock wave that is travelling at the speed of sound. This shock wave begins at the nose of the plane and ends at the tail in steady flight. It forms a kind of cone shape that surrounds the plane, as can be seen here. The pressure inside the cone is not that much greater than normal air pressure. However, since this overpressure is released very quickly, it is audible as a sonic boom. Have a listen to one. There are actually two booms that are produced, one at the nose and one at the tail which you can see in this video. However, they usually pass over observers almost at the same time, and so most people will only hear one. It's not just fighter jets that can produce a sonic boom, 
Perhaps the most famous form of transport that could break the sound barrier was Concorde, which was a commercial airliner before it was put out of use in 2003. Space shuttles can also break the sound barrier, but only when they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Well, that's all we have time for, except for this last fact. Humans are actually able to produce a sonic boom using their hands. The crack of a bullwhip is actually a sonic boom. This is because the end of it is travelling faster than the speed of sound. Now that's fun. Well, that's all for today. Until next time, remember, science is fun. Doesn't everything sound better and more educational coming from an English accent? Sonic booms were also popular during the 90s in a game called Street Fighter 2. Let's watch Guile beat up Ryu using Sonic Booms. Yes, this is how we entertained ourselves in the 90s, except for this is actually a little more uh, detailed than the regular Super Nintendo version. Here's a chart. It has a speed of sound and various materials. Air at zero, air at 20. Helium, water, seawater, copper, and iron. And notice sound travels a lot faster in more dense materials. Iron's pretty dense. And it travels wicked fast. Then it does in air. And it travels a lot faster in water too. Uh, next summer, if you're at the pool, have you stay on one side of the pool, have a friend on the other side of the pool. And both of you go underwater, and one of you talk in a normal voice, and you can actually hear your person talking completely across the pool. Pretty neat. So here's a quick little problem. Five the, find the wavelength in air at 20 degrees Celsius of an 18 hertz sound wave. So to do that, I'm going to use my handy dandy little writing pad. So remember, wavelength ugliest lambda ever, equals V over the frequency. You find the speed of sound at 20 degrees Celsius from your chart on the previous slide, 343 meters per second. You divide that by your frequency, which is 18 hertz. You put it in your calculator, you get 343 divided by 18, and you get about 19.1 meters. Now, at zero degrees C, the velocity is going to be smaller, so therefore the wavelength should also be smaller. So velocity over frequency again. And this time, we use 331 for our velocity. We divide that by 18 hertz. We put it in our calculators because we're not mathematicians. And that's why calculators were invented. And you get about 18.4 meters. So the wavelength is actually changed by the temperature of the air. Frequency can stay the same. Velocity is going to change, and your wavelength is going to change too. We also have something called the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is the change in pitch due to a moving wave source. So either the person producing the sound is moving, or the thing producing the sound is moving, or they can both be moving, which makes the equation even harder. So objects moving toward you cause a higher pitch sound. If you ever stand by some railroad tracks, not on them because that would hurt, and a train is coming towards you, the sound starts kind of low, and then as the train gets closer, it gets higher and higher and higher and higher until it reaches you, and then as it passes you, it's moving away, and the sound changes to a lower pitch. Try it. Uh, this Doppler effect is also used in radar by police because they're buttheads and like to get people for speeding. But those little radar guns are actually producing sound waves, not actual radar waves. 
It's also used by meteorologists. I'm sure if you've ever watched a weather report, you've heard of you know Doppler one radar. Even though meteorology is a very soft science, who the meteorologists pretend to be scientists, and it's actually used in astronomy by real scientists to find out like how far galaxies and stars and stuff are away from us. And it's also used uh, for something called the Doppler shift, uh, red shift, blue shift, which is how one of the things we use to prove the Big Bang actually happened. If you want to know more about that, just ask me. Quick little picture. Here's a car moving towards the uh, guy. More racing. Apparently our book really likes racing. So the car is producing a sound right here, and it's moving this way. And this is the source. It's moving relative to this guy. So relative to this guy, it's moving towards him. And it keeps making sounds, and like all the sounds kind of bunch up here at the end. So like this bunching up of sounds actually produces a higher pitch. Kind of confusing, but we're going to work out some problems and make it a little less confusing. We can also have Sheldon. This is really weird, going backwards. Sheldon's going to explain to us, possibly, why this happens. I want to talk to you about before we go to the park. I don't care if anybody gets it. I'm going as the Doppler effect. <laughs> no, it's not. If I have to, I can demonstrate. <laughs> So what time does the costume parade start? The parade? Yeah, so the judges can give out the prizes for best costume. The most frightening, most authentic, most accurate visualization of a scientific principle. Oh, Sheldon, I'm sorry, but there aren't going to be any parades or judges or prizes. This party is just going to suck. Oh, what? It's going to be fun, and you all look great. I mean, look at you. Thor and, and oh, Peter Pan, that's so cute. Actually, Penny, he's wrong. Not Peter Pan. I got a handful of pixie dust with your name on it. No, you don't. I hate what Sheldon's supposed to be. Oh, he's the Doppler effect. Yes. It's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. <laughs> So physics through the eyes of Sheldon is so much easier. Big Bang Theory, really good show. So the Doppler effect actually has an equation associated with it. And using a Sheldon word, it's pretty Bromdingnagian, which means huge. It looks like this. Ugh, a lot of symbols, a lot of subscripts. So this FD here is the frequency perceived by the detector. So if you a person could be the detector, you could have an actual machine to detector, but generally we're gonna talk about like this is gonna be us, the frequency that we hear. That equals the frequency of the source times the velocity of sound through whatever medium we're talking in, minus the velocity of the detector if you're moving, divided by velocity of the sound again, minus the velocity of the source. So best way to explain this is with a problem, but here's a little this just explains exactly what I just said. Frequency perceived by a detector is equal to the velocity of the detector relative to the velocity of the wave divided by the velocity of the source relative to the velocity of the wave multiplied by the wave's frequency. So we're finding the relative velocity here for both of these. This is the sound regular speed. So this V and this V are going to be equal. 
and finding it relative to the, the detector and relative to the source. But we can also make this equation a little easier with this next slide. I'm going to call it a little math blast. Uh, I'm not going to really explain it on here because it's you know pretty long. So I'll explain this in class tomorrow, actually. But you can actually make this Doppler equation a little simpler if either you as the detector or the uh, source is stationary, meaning not zero. So either VD is going to be zero or VS is going to be zero. But unfortunately, they both can't be zero. So here's a quick little problem. Uh, trumpet player sounds C above middle C, which is 525 hertz, while traveling in a convertible at 24.6 meters per second. If the car is coming towards you, what frequency would you hear? And you can assume that the temperature of the air is 20 degrees C. So, in physics, we draw pictures. So, for the car, we're just going to draw a box. And it is moving towards you. So, Vs equals 24.6 meters per second. Velocity of sound and air at 20 degrees Celsius is 343 meters per second. So that just equals V. And we got you standing over here. Apparently I forgot to shut off my email. And your velocity, velocity detector, equals zero. So it actually makes life easier. And the frequency of the source, which I should put on the other side. Just erase that guy. Frequency of the source equals 524 meters. No, it doesn't. It equals 524 hertz. Hertz, something per second. In this case, waves per second. So we want to find the frequency that we're hearing. So we're looking for FD. And that's going to equal FS times V minus VD over V minus VS minus but our VD is zero. So this equation actually reduces to something a little simpler. It might look uglier, but there's lots more ones and stuff. So, and I'll explain how I did this tomorrow. Actually reduces to one over one minus VS over V. And like I said, I'll explain that tomorrow. So now we start plugging stuff in. So our FD equals 524 hertz times 1 over 1 minus velocity of the source is 24.6 divided by velocity of sound, 343. These are both measured in meters per second, so it's actually going to cancel out. So the units are going to cancel out. So un no units, no units, no units. So all the stuff in parentheses has, parentheses has no units. So we're just going to get a proportion of this original 524, which you know is actually what we should be getting since we're looking for another frequency. So whenever you do this, since it's moving towards you, should it be higher or lower? Say it out loud, higher or lower. If you said higher, you'd be correct. It's moving towards you. The frequency should appear higher. And in this case, when you plug all that in your calculator, you get 564 meters per second. Again, I am terrible today with units. I lied. Hertz. That's what you get. Yeah, we'll even circle it. 564 hertz.
Thank you for all paying attention today, and I will see you in class manana.